Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Pediatric Pain Control, Episode 2, Assessment and Treatment. After watching this episode, participants should understand how to assess pain in infants and children, understand pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic ways to treat pain in infants and children, and understand how anxiety and fear play a role in pediatric pain. Since infants can't tell you my skin, my pain is a 1 to 10, they don't understand it, we usually use the faces. So you can kind of look at a child and decide, are they somewhat calm, you know, all the way up to screaming their head off, which we would give a 10. And also, how can you console them? Sometimes they just need to hear their mom's voice, but if consoling doesn't help, I'm gauging their face on how much pain they're in. So sometimes you, you can actually show the child the picture of the face and say, you know, kind of explain the, the happy faces, I'm not in any pain, the saddest face, I'm in the most pain, and let them pick a face. Children who uh, are old enough to understand the pain part of it, the, the number part, can if you give them a explanation of one is no pain at all, or I'm very happy, and or just a little bit of pain and 10 is the biggest boo boo I've ever had, they can usually guesstimate in between whether whether they're at the beginning, middle, or end. They might not be able to give a number, but they can, they can decide where they fall somewhere in the scale. So to review, assessment of pain in the pediatric patient can be obvious or subtle. Providers should learn to use physical cues to help evaluate pain, including a detailed physical exam and monitoring for abnormal vital signs. In addition, rating of pain in pediatrics is more difficult than in their adult counterparts. And while older patients may be able to use a 1 to 10 rating scale, for younger patients, using visual scales, such as the FACES scale at the right, is advised. Kids who come to the ED who are well medicated or at least have their pain somewhat under control are much easier to deal with because when they come in, there's going to be a period that we can't help them. So if they can come in already in pain control, I think they are much easier to triage, to assess their pain, and I think it leaves them feeling much better about their, their ED experience overall. Um, the patients that come in in pain, um, the vital signs are often increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased respiratory rate um, because of the ang not only the anxiety that they're feeling from coming in but the, the pain that they're experiencing and when you get their pain under control you will see their vital, vital signs stabilize out and you can easier assess what else might be going on when you don't have pain in the picture. Treating a child's pain will often make it much much easier to actually evaluate them and find out what in fact injury the injuries are that you're dealing with. Um, we often will receive phone calls of a very appropriately concerned paramedic uh, worried about a femur fracture or some other major long bone uh, fracture in a child. But of course, it's uh, very difficult to evaluate that child because they are in pain. They've had a very, very scary experience to them. And um, other techniques are needed to get that child some pain relief and therefore some relaxation so that he can better perform an assessment. Um, time and time again, I'm amazed uh, how you see an improvement in vital signs you see an improvement in uh, perfusion, just an improvement in the ch child's overall well-being after they've received appropriate pain control. Sometimes it can just be a simple splinting of an injured arm or leg, but often it does require uh, IV or IM doses of morphine. Morphine helps me evaluate the kids when they relax, they can actually focus on their injuries, they can discuss with you what's going on without them having additional fear or pain when I'm doing my hands-on assessment. If anytime you assess a child for pain, it's part of the vital signs. You need to get a set beforehand, before your treatment, and then after. That way you know if they've had any improvement or if not, no improvement at all. Document it as part of your vital signs. Parents can help assist in evaluating kids when they know what their baseline is, how they normally are, if they're um, they tend to exaggerate, they are very stoic, they can uh, help put the child a little more at ease when they're there, and um, as long as they're supporting you and the child, things will be better. Techniques for management of pain may include splinting, ice, elevation, distraction, and pharmacologic interventions such as IV or IM morphine in accordance with local protocols. Uh, it's always perfectly appropriate to cheat, treat a child for pain. We often have to reassure parents that no, their child is not going to become addicted to morphine. Uh, I think parents, just like all of us, are a little leery of giving um, what's perceived as very, very strong pain medication to a child. But the reality is they have very, very real pain, and therefore we must treat their pain with very real pain medication. 
and our uh, medication of choice is going to be morphine. Again, whether it be through a shot or through IV, uh, I encourage you to take advantage of that modality so that you have a more cooperative, uh, calmer patient that you can therefore evaluate more thoroughly and uh, hopefully have a more stable, uh, more comfortable transport for both you and the child. Children uh, can often be very difficult with regards to getting an IV in them, whether they have chubby little arms and you can't find their vessels, or they just are not able to cooperate so you can get an IV in place. Or perhaps this is a child who has a complex history and uh, has had some erosion or wearing away of their veins from multiple, multiple IV sticks in the past. Therefore, I, I encourage you to remember that, at least in our region, again, always follow your own regional protocols. It's perfectly appropriate to give a dose of morphine intramuscularly, that is, via a shot. Uh, we're often leery of giving a shot to a child. A child is certainly very leery of hearing that a shot is coming their way. But again, it will give them very adequate pain control uh, in a child where you might not otherwise be able to obtain it. In addition, if you are ever concerned that maybe, you know, maybe there is just one good shot where I can get an IV and I'm not sure for whatever reason that I'm going to have success placing that IV, it's totally appropriate to go ahead, give that child a shot of medicine, and then let us give a chance in the ED with our pediatric ED nurses to place that IV. Um, so uh, we know that that one opportunity to place an IV is not, in fact, lost. Sometimes what appears to be pain is actually anxiety about the experience or just about you know, being separated from a parent. So if sometimes if you can try to reassure them where they're going, that their mom is with them, you can better separate out what's really, I'm just nervous about going to hospital versus I'm in pain. Because kids can get themselves fairly hysterical when there's no pain at all, and it's all anxiety. They can be in um, a moderate amount of pain, but they get themselves so worked up and so anxious that it will increase their, will increase their um, pain level. So I think it reverts back to getting their pain under control. You'll get much more cooperation in them being able to talk to you if their pain doesn't get so, so high that you just can't reason with them. Younger kids have a hard time differentiating between fear and pain. And so at that point you need to have them focus, try to distract them a little bit with school or family or family pets and you take the fear out of it and you're able to focus in on the injury pain. Uh, in children, there's often a high uh, emotional component uh, to what they're feeling and what they're experiencing. Um, whether we talk about the stereotypical teenager who can't stand the sight of blood um, or the child who's very appropriately upset that their arm uh, is obviously fractured when looking at it, uh, sometimes the very simple thing of just covering an injury can go a very long way uh, in distracting the child and making them feel better. Uh, the uh, out of sight, out of mind concept actually will work quite well, especially in the toddler population. Um, you can also take advantage of talking to the child about a favorite thing that they might have. Take advantage of what they were doing at the time of the injury. Talk to them about that. Or maybe they're wearing a shirt that has their favorite superhero character on it. Uh, whatever cues you can get from the child or from the parent to use as distraction can often be very uh, helpful in calming your injured or sick patient. I wouldn't underestimate the benefit of splinting an injured arm or leg as well. Uh, stabilizing that broken bone will help uh, reduce pain tremendously. And again, just like using a uh, pain medication such as morphine, splinting an injured arm or leg will also go uh, very far in calming a patient and just making them feel more secure. A tip I might bestow upon you for treating children in pain is make it into a game. Uh, kids think it's an emergency, they see all these lights and sirens, they see uh, people in scrubs with stethoscopes and white jackets, and they're afraid. So turn it into a game. Uh, take your favorite stuffed animal and talk through them, or uh, don't be so in their face obtrusive. Work from across a room, be friendly with them, ask their names and distracting questions. To reduce a family or patient's anxiety is education. A lot of these kids at a young age can't really talk to them at a level where they can understand. If they're a teenager, that's different. Treat them like an adult. But you, for the parents, just tell them what you're doing, tell them what the risks are, the side effects, and how it's going to benefit or behoove their child. As the more calm you can keep yourself or the parent, the, the better the child's going to react to the situation. Um, and covering, covering the wound or the burn or the injury um, is a big thing. Um, and then talking about, even just talking in a calm voice about where you're going, why you're going there, 
um, that there's lots of kids there and not and almost making it more of a less than a less of a scary experience um, and just everybody staying calm really helps the kid a lot. After watching this presentation, participants should now be able to assess pain using age-appropriate methods in pediatric patients. Additionally, participants should understand the management of pain, including splinting, ice, elevation, and pain medications. And lastly, participants should understand how to recognize and mitigate anxiety and fear in the pediatric pain patient.